Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a tip calculator. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a container here with the title tip calculator. Then we have two inputs, including the bill amount and the tip percentage. For example, we can choose $100 bill amount and the tip percentage of 20%. And if we click on the calculate, this is going to calculate the total number of amount that the customer should pay to that uh, store, for example. So as you can see, we have designed this ca calculator, tip calculator using CSS in a modern design. Then we have used JavaScript to get these two elements, the value of these two inputs, and calculate the total amount based on these inputs. And also we're going to add some event listener to this button to trigger a function which is going to calculate these amounts. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. In this section, we're going to work on the HTML part of the project. As you can see, we have put the final version here for our comparison. As you can see, there is a container in the middle with the title tip calculator. Then we have two inputs. One is bill amount, one is tip percentage. And finally, we have a button to calculate this. The first thing we need to do is to create a folder and we're going to open this folder inside the Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it the name of our project, which is tip-calculator. And once we have created this folder, we can just open it inside the Visual Studio Code by right click and click on open with code. So now we have this folder as a default folder of the Explorer section of Visual Studio Code, as you can see, tip calculator. Let's close the welcome tab and here we just create a new file and we call it index.html. And once we have created the HTML file, now we need to just create the HTML5 boilerplate, which we can achieve by just adding an exclamation mark. If you have uh, activated your emit abbreviation, you, you should see this suggestion. And if you press on tab, you're going to get the HTML5 boilerplate. Let me explain this one real quick. We have here doc type, which is which tells the browser which version of HTML we are using. As we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here in the opening tag. Then we have the HTML tag, which covers the head and the body section. The opening uh, tag of the HTML has the a lang attribute which defines the language of the page and as we are using English we, ch we just need to write down en for the language which stands for English then we have the head tag which covers the metadata tag and also the title tag the metadata tags the first one relates to the chart set attribute and for html5 UTF-8 is recommended because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols then we have the compatibility metadata tag, which tells the Internet Bro Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. Then we have the viewport metadata tag, which sets the width of the screen, width of the browser to devices width. For example, the person who is using mobile will have a smaller browser width than the person who is using desktop or tablet. And here the initial skill is, is the initial zoom level of the browser, which is set to be 100% by default. And after that, we have the title document. So let's open the visual, uh, let's open this website inside the browser using the extension that we have installed and uh, which is called live server. So if you click on this go live, this is going to open it inside the visual, uh, inside the browser, the default browser, which is in my case, Google Chrome. And uh, you can see that it is open in the port 5500 and the file is called index.html and then the title is document. Let's bring the website to the right side and the Visual Studio Code on the left side and let's change this title to the name of our project which is tip calculator. As you can see now the title is changed to tip tab calculator. After that we're going to have uh, inside the body section, we're going to have a container which is going to cover everything. So I'm going to add 
a div with a class of container by just writing down dot container. And if we press enter, we're going to create a div with a class of container. And here we're going to have an h1 tag saying tip calculator. After the h1 tag, as you can see, we're going to have a paragraph. And inside the paragraph, we're going to say enter the fill amount and tip percentage to calculate the total. After the paragraph, we're going to have two inputs and each input is going to have a label. So I'm going to add a label and this is going to be for the bill. So we just say for bill and then the name uh, inside the label, we're going to say bill amount. After that, we're going to have a input with the type of numbers. So we just say type number. And this input, as you can see, we can now change this value inside the input. After that, we're going to have a line break. We just say BR. We add a line break. This is, should be like that. And then we're going to have another uh, label. And this label is going to be for the tip, which is going to say tip percentage. And this is going to be number as well, the input with the type of number. So in order to uh, distinguish between these inputs, you know, later using JavaScript, I'm going to add an ID for the first one and then call it bill. And for the second one, I'm going to add an ID saying tip. And then after the inputs, the second input, I'm going to add another line break. And then we're going to add the button. So we're going to have a button with the ID of calculate. So I'm going to add a hashtag for the ID. We just say calculate and we press enter. This is going to create a button with the ID of calculate. And inside the button, we're going to say just calculate. So we see the button now. After the button, we're going to have another line break. So I'm going to copy this. And after the but here, we're going to have another label for the total, saying total. And this is going to be an span, not an input, because we don't want to change its value. And it's, this is going to uh, just have an ID of total. Okay. Yeah, that was it for the HTML part of the project. As you can see, we have just added the H1 tag here, paragraphs two inputs with the labels and a calc calculate button and finally another label for total. In the next section, we're going to work on the CSS part of the project and we're going to style it like the one in the final version with this beautiful modern design with a box shadow. And uh, we're gonna create these uh, beautiful hovering effect for the button. So see the next section for the CSS part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML parts of the project. In this section, we're going to start the project using CSS. The first thing we need to do is to create a CSS file here. So I'm going to create a new file here by opening the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we can click on this icon to create a new file called style.css. Before using this CSS file, we need to add a link to this file within the HTML code. So we need to come back to index.html and inside the head tag, at the end of the title tag, we're going to add a link tag. We just write down link and then click on the one with the CSS. This is going to create a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the CSS style sheet. And the address is a solid CSS because the, the both files are located at the same directory. So now we can install our project. First, we start with the set the body style. We just, uh, because we want to install some input, when you have an input, you need to add this at the top of your CSS, which is box sizing, border box. This is going to help you to install the boxes like inputs better because this is going to calculate the extra borders and the space around this input. After that, we're going to target the body section and I'm going to change the background color. 
to something like light gray, which is F2, F2, F2. As you can see, the color has changed. So the CSS file is working. And after that, we're going to change the font family to something called Hela Helvetica. Helvetica. And if this font is not available, I'm going to use Sans Serif instead. Okay. So we have just uh, installed the body section. Now we're going to start with the container. This container, this div with a class of container, which is going to be in all sections. So if you see the final version, this is the container we have. So for the container, because it has a class of container, we can target that one using dot container. We open a set of curly braces. First thing first, we're going to change its background color to white. Okay. And then we're going to set a maximum width of 600 pixels. As you can see, it's smaller now, but it's not in the center. So what I want to do here is to create a margin. So I just say margin 100 pixels top and bottom and uh, left and right to be auto so it's, this is going to have an equal margin to the left and right and uh, if you remove the zoom level now because it has 200 level percent zoom so if you remove it as you can see the box is this size and then we're going to have some padding which is a space inside and around the elements inside this container which is going to be 20 pixels and let's add some box shadow. So let's add some shadow fact. So 0 and 0 for X and Y, but 10 pixels for blurness. So you can see we get the blurness in all direction. And let's change the color of the shadow to be R an RGBA, which is the red, green, blue, and alpha. And here we set the red to be 0, green 0, blue 0, which is stands for black. And for the alpha, I'm going to set it to be 0.2, which is 20% transparency. As you can see, the shadow. And now we're going to change the border radius and add some border around the corners of 10 pixels. Okay, looks fine. In the mobile size, we have some margin too. That is nice. And uh, that's it for the container. Next things we want to style is this H1 tag which is saying tip calculator. So I'm going to go outside this container. I'm going to target the H1 tag here. And then let's add the margin top of zero. We remove the margin at the top, connect it to the wall, and we bring it to the center using text align center. That's it. That's it for the what, H1. The next things we want to style is the input, these two inputs here. So we're going to target these two inputs by just saying input. So let's add some padding, padding of 10 pixels. Then we're going to have a border of one pixels, solid, which is going to be a line. And then the color would be CCC, which is a kind of gray color. After that, let's add some border radius and we set it to be four pixels. So we make it rounded in the corner and then we, let's add some margin of 10 pixels up and down and zero for left and right. And, so, and then I want it to be in the all direction, all the screen. So I'm going to set the width to be 100%. Okay, as you can see, we have two beautiful inputs. You can change the numbers. Okay, and then the, the next things we want to style the button. Is this button we're going to target the button simply by just saying button so let's change its background color we just say background and the color I want to use is 4 C A F 50 and then let's change the color of the text to be white we also want to add some padding of 10 pixels let's remove the border so we set the border to be none and uh, let's make the cursor to be pointers. So when we hover over it, we see a pointing hand in the mouse effect. And then we're going to have some margin, top and bottom 10 pixels and zero for left and right. 
and we set the width to be 100% like this. So we have all, I have added everything now. So we can just make the text bigger. For example, you can just change the font size to be 18 pixels. And then we can just make it uppercase, for example. We just say text transform to be uppercase. Okay, that's it for the button. The other thing you want to add to the button is when I hover over it, I want to see the color to be different. So I'm going to add a pseudo effect of hover pseudo effect. So we just say hover. And for the hover effect, I want to change its background color this time to 45049, 45A049, this color. So, and if you want it to be smooth, you can just add a transfer transition for the background color. So we just copy this. And then we just added 0.3 seconds with ease effect. You can see a little bit smoother. Okay, 0.2 would be enough. And the last things we want to install is this total, the total amount. And uh, we're going to target that because the total is inside an experiment the id of total we can target that one using the id of total we just want to change the font size to be 24 pixels and font weight to be bold and finally we set some margin top of 10 pixels okay you cannot see it yet we need to add some values here for example i just say thousand we see the value here that's bold okay uh, so I'm going to delete this one because late in the next section, based on the input, we're going to calculate the total amount using JavaScript. So we're going to first thing first, we want to get the value of these two inputs. And then when we click on the button, we're going to calculate the uh, total amount and show it inside this span all using JavaScript. So see in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to work on the JavaScript and add functionality to the, to the project and just make it work with the inputs and show it uh, inside the total, like the one in the final version. For example, here, if you choose $1,000 bill with 20% tip, the total is going to be 1,200. So the first things we need to do is to create a JavaScript file. So I'm going to open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here I'm going to write down index.js to create a J JavaScript file. Before using the JavaScript file, we need to add a link to this file inside the HTML code. It should be inside the body section and at the end of the body section because we all the contents need to be load it first and then we're going to manipulate it using javascript so i'm going to add a script tag i just write down scn i'm going to click on the second auto suggestion the one with the src and the src which is the source address is index.js because both files are at the same directory so now let's close the explorer section the first things we need to do is to add an event listener to this button with the id of calculate so here I'm going to bring in, bring in the button. I'm just going to call it btn element. And we're going to target that one inside the document because we want to target all the browser. And then we're going to use a method called get element by ID. I'm going to pass the ID, which is calculate. Now we have this element, we can just add the event listener to it. So we're just going to target this BTN element we have and we add an add event listener to it. And the event we want to listen is click. So when we click on it, we want to trigger a function and uh, we can just create the function here or we can just call the function. For example, we're going to call the function uh, calculate total. And then I'm going to call create the function here. So I'm going to create the function. I'm going to call it calculate total. So for now, we just console log. For example, we just console log click. So let's open the console using F12. 
we go to console, let's clear the console. And now, let me, if I click on calculate, this is going to console log clicked. So this is working. After testing the function to be working, instead of just console logging, we're going to get the value of these elements like bill amount, tip percentage. First, we need to bring these elements. So they are inside an input. The first input is this input for the bill. It has an ID of bill. So I'm gonna uh, go to the JavaScript and then I'm gonna create a constant and uh, first I wanna call it bill input. And this is going to be equal to similar document that get element by ID, but the ID is bill or bill. So we can copy this one and make it for the tip too. So just say tip and the ID is tip. So we have access to these two inputs now. We can just uh, get their value. So I'm just gonna say const bill value. This is going to be equal to this bill input and we target its value. So now if I console log, if I console log bill value, and if I open the console again using F12, I just change the value here. For example, I just say 2000 something. If I click on calculate, we can get the value of this bill here. So whatever value we have, for example, 32 calculate, we get 32 because we are console logging the value of the bill. Let's do the same things for the tip. So I'm gonna change this bill using Ctrl D to tip. So we get the value of the tip as well. Now we can calculate the total. We just say total value is going to be equal to this formula. We're just gonna multiply this bill value to one plus tip value divided by 100. So whatever the tip value is, we divide it by 100 and uh, we add one to it and then we multiply it to bill value. So now if we console log total value, for example, we have a $100 bill with 20% tip, the total is going to be 120. So let's test it. So if we calculate, as you can see, the total value is 120. If the percentage is 10, this is going to be 110. But as you can see, we are getting some uh, weird numbers. This is the JavaScript problem. Uh, but we can fix this one as well because this is the base on the binary values. So now instead of console logging, I'm going to bring the input as well, this uh, total at the top. I'm going to bring the total. So I'm going to copy this one. I want to change this to total as spam. And then this is going to be total. So now we have access to this element. So instead of just console logging, we can change the total spam inner text to be equal to this total value. Okay. So now if we changed, for example, we just say 100 and we just say 20%, the total is 120. If it's 10, this is going to be 110, but some uh, values here. So we can fix this one. We just add, uh, a method called two fixed, okay, two fixed, and then we just fix it to two digits maximum. So I'm gonna say again, 110. This is going to show it like this: 110 and zero, for example, cents. If you do it, for example, 2.5 percent, this is going to be 102 dollars 50 cents. All right. So that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. We have. Learn how to bring the elements, how to add an event listener to it, and how to calculate the value based on the inputs and uh, how to print the value inside the output, which is our total span. So, see you in the next project.